So now we can start looking at transportation and communications and how people got to the West and how this developed over the 19th century. So first people had to move on trails because there was no sort of communication developments to the West whatsoever. So people would move with wagons on these trails, they would go on horseback, they would go on foot and it was dangerous and so not many people made the move because it's like go over like rivers and stuff like that. And it was it could be fatal for a lot of people, so you'd only make the journey if you were desperate to. So not many people did, which really limited the westward expansion until the development of the Cumberland Pike or the National Road. You can call it both, I don't know why. Which was developed between 1811 and 1837, and it was a 620 mile road road <laughs> connecting the Potomac and then the Ohio rivers. And then it gradually expanded west after that. So that was important for moving more people west. We had like a specific road to go down. So it kind of showed how it was a place that was established and habitable to people and more likely to make the journey. But it is still quite limited in the fact that the conditions were still unfavourable. It's still a very long journey. It could still be a very dangerous journey. Slow. And there was a lot of like attacks along the way, which were a bee just flew into my window. There was quite a lot of attacks along the way, it was quite dangerous still, there was no sort of law enforcement. So again, people would only make the journey if they were like fully committed, which wasn't really that many people, especially since there wasn't many prospects at this time in the West anyway. So after the development of the roads came the development of steamboats and canals. So this was important for increasing settlement along the kind of river lines because these big steamboats would bring in trade and profit. So it meant, so it wasn't really for transporting people, it's more for transporting goods, but it increases settlement in the fact that it makes a business and a way for people to make money and earn a living in the West. So it encourages settlement that way. So in 18, 1807, the first steamboat launched on the Hudson River, Hamilton reference ish. And so before this, produce would be like floated downstream and then be broken up. So it'd be like floated on like timber or like water and be broken up at New Orleans, which isn't great because it means it can only go one way, it can't go back up again. So you can't bring trade back and forth. Obviously steamboats allow for this to happen. So you get a massive increase in trade and in movement of goods with the adaptation of steamboats, reducing time and costs for transporting goods, making it more viable to live there. There were 17 steamboats on the Mississippi River in 1817 and then by 1836 there was 361. So now we can look at the importance of canals for again increasing trade and profit to and from the west. So the Erie Canal was established and funded by the government which was completed in 1825 and it stretched from Albany to Buffalo. <laughs> More geography. And then ultimately there was about 5,000 kilometres of canal like around the 1840 mark. So which was a significant advantage for people because it meant that like, freight charges dropped. So again it became a lot cheaper, a lot easier for people to be transporting goods to and from the west. Making it more profitable, making people more likely to move there. I was like I've got no top on, I do I promise. So the success of the Erie Canal in New York meant that it was proven to be profitable and proven to be good by other people. So it meant that more states were beginning to develop their own canals, encouraged others to be built, which meant massive economic development when they started to get developed in the West. And it meant settlement increased beyond New York, going on down to the West again. Well, there were some problems with steamboats. So one third were lost in accidents by 1849. So it meant people would stop funding them, they stopped being such a big development because they just weren't stable enough and were and weren't profitable enough because they were lost so easily. And then also with the development of the railways, which we'll get on to, like that was more of an investment that people were likely to go into because railways were seen to be more efficient by the 1850s and they were kind of the main mode of transportation so it kind of undermined the canals and the steamboats so they lost influence. So now we can look at the increase in the mail service and mail development to connect the East and the West through that way. So if we just quickly run through some of them, there was a transcontinental mail service, which was established first, but the development of it was quite slow. So it was overtaken by the Pony Express in 1860, 
which transported both mail and newspapers across the central plains within 10 days, so that's impressive. And then in 1861, the Transcontinental Telegraph Line was established, which really helped to unite the East and the West, where messages could be transmitted virtually instantly. And so this really increased Westford expansion, if you think about it, because people feel more comfortable going to the West, knowing that they can still communicate with friends and family in the East. And also, if they were sending messages to the East, to their friends and family, saying how great the West is and how it's a great opportunity and it's a great adventure, people from the East are going to start moving to the West because they see it as such a good prospect for them. So that increases Westford expansion. And also for business, it allows business to be conducted from the West to the East. So people are more likely to move to the West where they have economic opportunities there and they're not limited by their surroundings or anything like that. It's becoming economically viable to move there, which is dramatically going to increase the expansion. And now we can look at the development of the railways. So they started to develop a little bit in like the 1840s and 50s with some smaller lines, so like in Kansas, but it couldn't truly develop because they wanted a transcontinental railway line, so from the east to the west, like fully along. But it couldn't happen because there was too many disagreements in Congress because we've got sexual tension at this time, we've got the Civil War. So there's no agreements between like Democrats and Republicans on where the line should go because naturally the Southerners want it in the South and the Northerners want it in the North. And so they can't grow so nothing can get passed. Until during the Civil War when all the Democrats and Southerners were gone. And so it's just the Republicans mostly and just people who are Northern sympathisers. So they want the Transcontinental Line in the North, which allows the Pacific Railroad Act to be passed in 1862. So the Union Pacific Company built west from Nebraska and the Central Pacific Company built east from California. <laughs> That's like about 15 takes. And then the two lines met in 1869 and the Transcontinental Railway line was complete and then four other Transcontinental Railway lines were built by the 1890s. So I mean this was important in so many different ways. It physically united the East and the West together. You had like one line so you could go from to and from very easily I meant that people who wanted to go to the west could just get hop on a train and go. Then after risk the lives in the process there wasn't any like massive turmoil to get there. And so to start building the railroads in the first place, these big railroad companies were given large loans and big land grants from the federal government without which they couldn't start construction. But this meant that even after the railroads were in my voice, after the railroads were completed there was still a lot of land left over which the railroad companies could sell to people which was really important for Westford expansion again so people could move to the west and get cheap land also allowed the Homestead Act to be established which we'll get into in a later video propaganda from railways was also significant because I think because they wanted to make profit with travel and also wanted to make profit with the land that they were selling so they kind of pictured established and described the West as a land flowing in milk and honey where like all your dreams were coming true and all this stuff. Like I know there was like after the gold rush there was like rumours in the east that like gold like rained in California and came from the sky and stuff like that. So there's another lot of kind of propaganda going on at this time about people moving to the West and how it would be, you know, incredible. Like it's something completely different, it's something completely new. And I think the development of the railroads is the first time that people can really get to the West without having to like drastically risk the lives for it. It's also really important for business because again with trade and stuff like that people can now establish links extremely easily from east to west and can transport goods and profits or like farmers can transport all their stuff so easily east to west which is really establishing that kind of business line which means people are going to move to the west because there's economic purposes there and there's economic incentives. I think if we're going to try and criticise the railroads, which is quite hard to do because I think if we're looking at the importance of communications, I think yes they are very important obviously because people need a way to get to the west and the majority of people aren't going to 
make the treacherous journey that the trails required, like back at the start of the 19th century. So the developments of things like the canals and stuff for trade, for economic reasons, and then most notably the railroads so people can get to the west without too much difficulty is what really started off as the expansion and made it as big as it was and meant that the west really became a united part of the United States. But back to that, if we're trying to criticise, I think you can look at the railroads as a response to westward expansion rather than being the cause, which I think is definitely true because we can see settlements starting from the start of the 19th century. It wasn't like settlements started as soon as the railways were developed. The railways only were developed after the California gold rush and there were so many people moving like to the very like west of the west which is when the government realised they needed to start developing some sort of transportation which can bring people there really easily and really get kind of like the economy booming with the prospects in the west. And so you can see the railways as only being a response to that rather, be, rather than being the key factor in causing expansion. But I still think you can counter argue that and say expansion was nothing like the amount it was after the 1860s and after the development of that transcontinental line.